Hi everybody, welcome to Mitch Maths. My name is Mitch and in this video we're going to be looking at interest. So when we talk about interest, it is usually always to do with money. For example, if you have some money in a bank account, your bank would usually pay you some interest for the money that you have in the account with them. Or in the case of if you had a loan and you were repaying that loan, you would usually have to repay a little bit more money on top of what you owed already and that is called the interest. So there are two types of interest that we'll be looking at in this video, simple and compound. And we'll be looking at what they are and what's the difference. So starting with simple interest then, simple interest is when a percentage of the original amount only is paid at each interval. So with things like bank accounts, the interval is usually each year. So the original amount will be the original amount that you paid into that bank account. So say you paid a thousand pounds into the account and the interest rate was 10% per year. With simple interest, every year you'd get paid that 10% of that original thousand pounds. So 10% of a thousand would be a hundred. So every year after you would get 100 pounds exactly every year, no matter how much money you ever had in the account. Compound interest, on the other hand, works slightly differently to simple interest. So whereas simple interest only took percentage of the original amount only, compound interest is when a percentage of the, of the previous total is paid at each interval. So with our previous example with the bank account then, this would be where, say you had 10% uh, on your original thousand, so your first year would be exactly like simple interest, the 10% of 1,000 is 100, so then your total then becomes 1,100 after that first year. But with compound interest, you take the interest rate on the previous total. So now our total is 1,100. So we'll take 10% of that, which is 110. So now we've got 1,100 plus 110, and we've now got 1,210. And this means that the more money we get in the account, the more interest we'll earn because the interest rate stays the same but it's always earning the same percentage on a higher total so the payments each year will change and they will get bigger okay so i hope that made sense we'll go over some examples now then of how you would put some numbers around these and show you a bit more explicitly how they work okay so let's look at an example of a simple interest question then so this question we're asked so we've invested £400 in an account which pays 5% simple interest per annum. So per annum is per year. What is the total after 10 years? So what is the total amount in the account after 10 years? Okay, so if you remember simple interest is when we pay the same percentage of the original amount every year. So first thing we need to work out then is how much is paid per year. So we know that our original percentage is uh, 5%. So we need to know what is 5% of 400, because that's the original amount we put into the account. Okay, so uh, quickly in our heads then, so 10% is 40, half that for 5% will give us 20. Right, so now we know it's 20 pounds paid for one year, for one year. So now we're interested in 10 years, okay? So with simple interest, we pay £20 every year for 10 years. So then 20 times 10 is 200. So over the whole 10 years then, a total of £200 is paid with the interest. So that means our total is just the original amount plus how much we've earned with the interest. So the total after 10 years would be 400 plus 200 and that would give us 600 pounds. And that is our answer. So all we have to remember with these ones then is we have our original amount and it pays the same percentage of that original amount every year. So the payment doesn't move, it doesn't change. It's the same amount depending on what we paid originally. 
and then we just multiply that by the number of years that we want and then we get our final answer. Okay, so as we've mentioned already, so compound interest works slightly differently and we need a way of multiplying the new total every time by the percentage increase or percentage downcrease to get our new total. Okay, so for this we've actually got a formula. So our new amount will equal to our original amount. In this case, this is the amount at the very beginning multiplied by 1 plus r, which is our percentage change per year, divided by 100, all to the power of the number of years that we are accounting for. Okay, so this one is our new total. Okay, this one is our original amount. This is our percentage change per year. Or day or that could be days or whatever. And then the n is our number of days, years, whatever we are looking at. Okay? So this 1 plus r over 100 then, so this might look a little bit complicated, but in fact it's really, really easy. So if you remember back to our previous video where we were looking at percentage change, what we were doing was we were multiplying and dividing by decimals. So if we remember then that 1 represents our 100%. If we wanted to increase something by 8%, for example, we would convert that 8% into a decimal. That would become 0.08. We would add that to our 1 to become 1.08, then we would multiply that by our original amount to get our new amount. Okay, if that doesn't make any sense to you guys, then I recommend going and checking out my previous video on how we did that. But when you understand that, you'll realise that this is exactly what's going on here. So this 1 plus r over 100 is essentially a way of converting our percentage change into our decimal, which we will then multiply by the original amount to get our new amount. Okay, and the reason why we've got the power here is to represent the number of years or the number of uh, intervals between our original payment and our new total. Okay, so what we're effectively doing is we're taking our percentage change, okay, so this decimal that we're going to multiply our original amount by, and we're going to multiply it by that, the number of times that we want to have. So we're multiplying it. So say we increase something by 10%, this would become 1.1. So we've been then multiplying the same number by 1.1. We'll get a new number. We'll then multiply that by 1.1 again. And we'll keep doing this to the number of times that we have as our power. Okay, so just show you a really quick example of what I mean then. So we'll choose a really, really sort of simple numbers one. So we'll say, okay, so our if our original amount was... A thousand. Okay, and say you want to increase this by 10% for 10 years, just like our um, previous example. We'll say we want to increase it by 10%. Uh, percent. So we have 10 here, 10 divided by 100 is uh, 0 0.1. 1 plus 0 0.1 is 1.1. So times by 1.1, we must do this for 10 years. Okay. So now we have this little bit here. So now all we have to do is put this into our calculator and find the answer. So I'll just grab the calculator. So we want to put in a thousand times open brackets 1.1 close brackets all to the power of 10. And that's our answer. 2,594 if we round it up to the nearest whole number. Okay, so this means if we had a compound interest account and we put a thousand pounds in there at the start, okay, for 10 years with an interest rate of 10%, then after the 10 years, we would have 2,594. Okay, okay, so I just want to show you one more example then of compound interest just to really show you what's happening 
year after year that you're doing this. So I've got the example here then. So let's say we bought a car for £8,000. The value depreciates, so that means it gets worse, by 7% each year. So how much is a car worth after three years? Okay, so we start off with our original amount of 8,000. And what we want to do is we want to go through this year by year to show you exactly what's happening. So we know it gets worse by 7% each year. So in the first year then, our first year is 8,000 and we want to take 7% off of this. Okay, so we learned from our previous video then that we do that by multiplying by 0 0.93. Okay, because 7% as a decimal is 0 0.07, so 1 minus 0 0.07 is 0 0.93. So after the first year, we'll grab our calculator to write that one out. You've got 8,000 multiplied by 0 0.93. Okay. And that gives us 7,440. So this is the price of the car. That's the value of the car after one year. We want after three years. So that means we must keep going. So now the second year, our new value is 7,440. And we want to take 7% off of this again. So we'll do the exact same thing. We'll multiply it by 0 0.93. Okay. So we'll do 7440 0.93. And that gives us 6919.2. And that's our price after after year two. But the question asks for three years, so now we'll go one further. So we'll go to the third year, we'll start off with 6919.2. Multiply that by 0 0.93 again. So you've got 6919.2 multiplied by 0 0.93. And that finally gives us 6434. And then we'll go to two decimal places because this is a price. So we'll go to 86. Okay. And that is our final answer to the question. So the question asks for what is the value after three years of a 7% depreciation and this is what we come to, 6434.86. Okay, just multiplying the previous value by the decimal every year. Okay, so now if we think about the previous part of the video then where I went through the equation, this is exactly what it gives you. Okay, so we... What we're essentially doing is we're multiplying this by 0 0.03, sorry, 0 0.93, three times. So this is the exact same as writing 8,000 multiplied by 0 0.93 times 0 0.93 times 0 0.93. Okay, and because we're writing 0 0.93 three times here, we're multiplying it three times. This is the exact same as writing 8,000 multiplied by 0 0.93 to the power of 3. And remember, this is exactly what our formula was given us in the previous part of the video. is our original amount multiplied by the decimal. Remember, this was 1 plus r over a, uh, 100. So in this case, r would have been 7. So it would have been 7 times 100, and because we're depreciating, it would also be a minus 7 as well. So 7 over 100 would be 0 0.07. 1 minus 0 0.07 would give us 0 0.93. Okay? And then cubed, because it's 3 years, and we've times it by 3, we've times it 3 times here. Okay? And that's how we arrive at that equation. And if we use that, that would give us the exact same answer as this. So let me just prove that to you right now. So we've got 8,000 multiplied by 0 0.93 all to, to the power of 3. And there we go. 6,434.86, exactly the same. Okay, 
I hope that made sense guys. I hope that really clears up what simple and compound interest is. And I hope now after this video, you can use this in questions and you can get it right just like this. You can either use the formula and get it straight away, or you can break it down like this and do it year by year to really show to yourself what is happening. And no matter what method you choose, you can always check your answer by doing the other method. And hopefully you'll get the same answer with both, just like I have. And then you know you should be pretty confident that you've got the answer correct. If you enjoyed this video, then go and check out my other videos on YouTube and on my website. And thanks for watching Mitch Mouse, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you very much.